Welcome students. We're going to be taking some notes on the women's rights movement, which is also known as feminism. Uh, women's rights movement. In the 60s and 70s, second wave of feminism. The first wave was the right to vote, which if you remember 1920, the 19th Amendment was the first wave of feminism. But in the 60s and 70s would be the second wave of feminism. Currently, we are in the third wave of feminism uh, today. Rising numbers in the workforce, but dead-end jobs. The glass ceiling was, as it was called, that women could only make it so high in the corporate world. Betty Friedan and the Feminist Mystique came out, which was a book that addressed the problem that has no name, feeling of discontentment among women. And so with the feminist movement, um, there was this um, feeling of uh, inequality, and you could see it in the workforce and the sexism in the workforce, uh, though uh, it would be similar to the civil rights movement, uh, there would be some differences as well. Uh, the right, Raising Awareness, the National Organization for Women, also known as NOW, uh, the main thing that you need to know for this is the goals, equal pay, equal job access opportunities, reproductive rights, and passage of an ERA, which is the Equal Rights Amendment. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Tried to compel government to enforce Title VII of Civil Rights Act. So they tried to uh, piggyback on the civil rights uh, movement. And um, uh, throughout history, there has been this connection of uh, minority uh, civil rights with feminism civil rights. Uh, back to the mid-1800s with the uh, reform movements. Uh, the feminism movement back then was also coupled with the anti-slavery movement, the abolition movement. Radical feminism uh, sought a restructuring of society, believe men oppress women for their benefit. Uh, in 1968, the protest Miss America would call for freedom trash can, women compared to livestock. So women would take their high heels, their brassiers, and throw them in the trash can to protest the sexualization of women. Um, I, I appreciate much of this movement because I too believe that women have been objectified. Um, and I think that uh, we look at women in society as different than men and as objects for men. And historically that's been the case. And so uh, this is something that's uh, personal to me, and I believe um, the first wave of feminism was great. Second wave of feminism, I believe in a lot of the ten tenets. Uh, third wave of feminism uh, has been a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit uh, more interesting, and um, some caveats there. Um, but uh, this, this uh, looking at the psyche uh, towards uh, women, I think was uh, was definitely. Uh, important. Equal Rights Amendment uh, passed in 1972. So Congress actually passed an Equal Rights Amendment to the Constitution. Uh, however, states need to ratify that. And it came up three states short. So we almost had a constitutional amendment that protected females specifically, um, as opposed to just simply a civil rights amendment. Um, but uh, it never actually fully Past. 21 states do have their own equal rights amendments in their state constitutions. The main thing you need to know is that uh, it passed Congress but needed ratification, so it did fail. Uh, opposing Voices to Feminism, you have Gloria Steinman. Um, she's a pro feminist journalist and activist, supporter the ERA. Uh, but then you have Phyllis Schlafly, who was conservative. Uh, anti-ERA, viewed it as an assault on marriage and the family. Um, we will have a Socratic seminar that will look at these differing viewpoints. Uh, but Phyllis Schlafly, Schlafly, she felt like uh, women are already privileged class in society. She believed that uh, an equal rights amendment would make women eligible for the draft during wartime. And she also believed that women already uh, provided an important role in society as a foundation of the home, and the ERA would threaten that. And so 
Uh, she was, uh, Phyllis Schlafly was the poster child of the conservative anti-ERA movement, whereas Gloria Steinman and others uh, were activists in supporting of the Equal Rights Amendment. Uh, reproductive freedom, Margaret Sanger, uh, this is back in the turn of the century during the Andrew Carnegie and Rockefeller era. Uh, she's the mother of birth control movement. She founded Planned Parenthood. Uh, the FDA approved the pill in 1960. Griswold versus Connecticut was a court ruling that in 1965 ruled birth control is a matter of marital, marital privacy. And so it focused on the 14th Amendment, which is the right to privacy under citizenship. And so it went all the way back to post-Civil War era, the right to privacy, that uh, it's the right to a woman's privacy to take birth control so that her husband doesn't know. And so this was an attempt to protect women against their husbands, which I think that we can agree that um, there are many uh, husbands out there that uh, are controlling of their wives. However, um, this would also erode the uh, honesty and the harmony of family. Um, but Roe versus Wade would capitalize on Griswold versus Connecticut and take it further from birth control to legalizing abortions in 1973. The expansion of the sexual freedom, less worry about consequences during this time period as well. So if you don't have the consequence of uh, a baby from sex, then sex becomes uh, more of a freedom, if you will. And so uh, the sexual movement uh, is definitely in tandem with the birth control movement and the abortion movement. Uh, abortion was legalized in Roe v. Wade, as was referenced in 1973. All states must allow one trimester abortions. That's what it stated. Uh, once you get to the second or third trimester, that's where states disagree. State laws may pass reasonable restrictions, but may not cause an undue burden. Uh, this is Planned Parenthood versus Casey in 1992. Pro-life versus pro-choice debate has raged ever since and has become uh, a big voice in the last five years. Uh, there are conservatives who have voted for Donald Trump simply on the issue of pro-choice. Uh, negating the rest of the moral uh, questionability of the president, but since he is pro-choice, uh, they have voted for him. Uh, and the conservatives definitely have hijacked the pro-choice, or sorry, the pro-life, not pro-choice, the pro-life movement, um, the right to life. And this really comes down to, is the baby a life or not a life? It, you can be pro-choice if it is not a life, but if it is a life, then uh, that life has... Uh, protection under the Constitution as well as life. And so the debate has been, uh, is it a life or not a life? And science, um, no doubt, has uh, suggested that uh, it is a life. However, pro-choice advocates say that since a baby cannot survive outside the womb, therefore it is not a life. Uh, however, my argument is, can any child survive outside the womb without the mother's help? Um, I think that teenagers even need help. Additional effects of the movement, a 1963 Equal Pay Act, same pay despite gender, uh, was passed. Fantastic uh, ruling there. 1968, the EEOC ruled sex segre uh, segregated help wanted ads are illegal. 1970, beginning of no-fault divorce led to skyrocketing divorce rates. In 1972, Title IX banned sex discrimination in schools. So uh, schools cannot receive federal funds if they uh, discriminate based on sex in uh, whether it's sports or academics or clubs or anything like that. So you can't have an all-boys club um, if, uh, if you're a public school receiving funds from the uh, government. As you can see right here, the divorce rate would skyrocket uh, since 1970 to 1980 right here uh, because um, the no-fault divorce would say that you don't need to state a reason for the divorce to have a divorce, uh, but you can just get divorced uh, for any reason.
as you can see right here, uh, girls playing basketball would skyrocket as well because of Title IX. It would uh, make colleges provide equal funding for boys versus school sports. Uh, since football is such a high-funded uh, sport, uh, definitely the other guys' sports have been underfunded uh, because of this, and girls' sports um, are equal across the board. As you can see right here, 40, laters, 40 years later, uh, the Title IX issue. Uh, 1974 Equal Credit Opportunity Act prohibiting access to credit based only on sex, race, race marital status, etc. So there's been many, um, uh, I guess, uh, hindrances uh, to um, females um, out there. And so there's been uh, rulings um, by Congress. Uh, acts and laws to curb that. And that's the end of our notes.